Hi everyone, welcome back to my next free tutorial Friday. And this week, I'm super psyched to have one of my uh, all-time favorite students here with me. <laughs> it's uh, John Park. And um, John and I actually have, uh, we have, a, we have now kind of a long history, don't we? Yeah, we started back in 2006. Um, that's when I started Art Center. And uh, I, I think I started interning for you uh, the beginning of 2007 with uh, Ben Morrow. Yeah, so I remember that. You guys, um, we did a one internship, and then um, you went back to school for a couple of terms or something. Yeah. And then you came and worked here for like another year together. Yeah. And we worked on um, Alien Race. We did a lot of like, you know, franchise development for mm -hmm. games and toys and pitch work and, you know, a whole variety of things. Absolutely. But um, what we're going to talk about today, um, and we'll talk, we're going to do a little journey through John's amazing sketchbooks. Um <laughs> And uh, John uses primary. We actually use the same sort of mediums. Yeah, right? we, I think we kind of stick with ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen a lot, and then a little brush pen. A little and, bit of brush you know, pen. A little marker, and then some uh, mm -hmm. pen back over the top. Mm -hmm. um, but different, you know, similar yet different drawing styles. Yeah. And so we want to share John's uh, sketchbooks with you. So he was nice enough to bring over um, some of these. Are some of the newest ones, correct? These are some of the newest ones. Yes, in the D3 Cottonwood Arts book. That's right. Big plug. Super cool company if you guys haven't tried their sketchbooks yet. But um, Cottonwood Arts, um, John and his brother are doing, and um, I'm using their books. They're really great. So this is one of the new books uh, John's been playing with. And we're going to do a little, uh, we're going to start actually with the new stuff and then go back in time to some of the earlier works. So John's brought uh, four or five sketchbooks to pick through. So look at a few <laughs> pages in each. So this looks like a uh, ballpoint pen. Yes, these are all ballpoint pens. Um, just drawn directly on the surface of the paper. And so, and you've been like most recently uh, <clears throat> doing uh, concept work over at Hawken. Yes. Right? So you've been doing tons of these kinds of Macs. Absolutely. Over at Adhesive Games. Um, it's a funny story because a lot of times we actually don't do a ton of production work or pre production concept work. And so during meetings, I'll get pulled in and I'll try to just do a couple doodles here and there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been really fun to just kind of get back into the sketching groove. So you, you, like myself, love to sketch small. These for, these for us are actually like a large drawing. Yeah, right? it is. That's, and it's that's uncomfortably hard. large. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And, yeah. it? and it actually, for me, I always find, oh, I got to add more detail. And it, it, <laughs> you can burn a lot of time. <laughs> exactly. Whereas, you know, I'm, I'm actually more comfortable, um, sort of in this, in this size over here. Exactly. It's kind of my big sketch. <laughs> but yeah, because you're like, what am I doing with all this space? Yeah, totally. Yeah, what, I, I think now, you know, it's, it's much more viable to sketch small because you can just scan it and drop it right into Photoshop. Yeah, and you know, I, I've had a lot of questions and people ask me, you know, why do I keep my drawings literally thumbnail size? And I think for me personally, it's less intimidating. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I can kind of um, grasp the entire... Uh, you know, concept or, you know, what I'm tackling. So, I don't know, you know, they say bigger is better, but in this case, smaller is, is safer for me. <laughs> me too. And it's, and it's, it, I think in the end, it's faster. Yeah. And I've actually taken small sketches and then gone into Photoshop, painted them, and then mm -hmm. print them seven feet wide on the, on the wall. Yeah. Right? I mean, on a big, big print. Yeah. So it's not like you stay small in the end, but and I agree, it's hard for me to see the silhouette when it's too big. Yeah. In front of me, I have to like stand up, then I have to get a longer arm out there, and I lose control exactly. over the line work. And it's really hard, and I have to keep stepping back and back just to see the silhouette. Exactly. Yeah, sketching small helps, I think, a lot to get your silhouettes. i to skip a page and go across this yeah, way. Go across here. Um, so still the still ballpoint pen? Yep, still the ballpoint pen here. Um, my buddy Darren Quatch, um, we were kind of doing this simultaneously. I was heavily inspired by, you know, his his range of sketches that he started. Yeah, his form language, you know, like his his range of ability to to modify shape is it's, pretty stunning. It's pretty. He's in one of the best designers yeah. I've I've got to work yeah, with. Yeah, he's great. Um, yeah, and it was just kind of got me back to just drawing, you know. And I think one of the things that I found was, you know, there's a huge disconnect when you start rendering and drawing and painting in Photoshop. And going back traditionally, it's kind of that, this, uh, this physical aspect in drawing, it feels so good. It, it does feel good, but it's hard, isn't it? It's very hard. So like, I, I know for me, it's, <laughs> it's actually a lot easier to create interesting looking things in Photoshop right, than right. it is to do it straight 
out of your brain through your arm right. to a blank white piece of paper. Right. Do you have some tricks to get started that way? I mean, you just start, you start drawing very lightly at first and, you know, or maybe like a loose idea and then it starts to take form and then you have more and more confidence. I think since this is kind of more the, the latest stuff, um, I started doing a lot of marker underlays and essentially it's a way to draw like with low opacity, right? Mm -hmm. And you can kind of go back on top and refine. But as I've kind of kept on drawing, I felt that, you know, what if I kind of did a lot lighter sketch and you can kind of see here um, it's very very light and it's just kind of focusing on just the main shape the overall impression and the silhouette and then if I like the shape if I like the direction I'm going with then I can do a little bit more of a refined sketch um, yeah that's I try to do the same and, and just try to keep it um, very light this one here yeah so these are some concepts I did um, this was actually for a client I did some stuff for Nike, and they wanted some like robotic arms. And again, it was just kind of I, I was on the whim. Um, I was talking on the phone, and you know, with the with the design director, and you know, he was just asking for some ideas, and I was just sketching literally. I felt like this was so, you know, proficient um, to just generate ideas as opposed to taking notes and then kind of revisiting, you know, what those notes were, and then you know. And then start generating. So I, I feel like there's definitely you know really good advantages to drawing traditionally, um, it, especially in this case. You can't beat the speed. Yeah, right? you I mean can. it's just it's so fast. Um, so we'll go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's um, it's so fast and it's so immediate, and that's what makes it you know. But it's still tough. Like say you do uh, anybody uses Photoshop and use custom brushes. Right? Yeah, what you can generate as far as uh, shape and form language that you is say maybe not naturally what you could draw mm -hmm. is pretty awesome right um and it can definitely stimulate you to you know to see new shapes and forms right. and expand your your design library mm -hmm. but what i like to do is do those experiments in photoshop but then maybe try to draw some of those right. things i invent digitally right try to draw them again traditionally right. and then by the actually the the motion i think of observing and drawing those things that you've invented digitally back into your own sketchbook oh yeah is a way to get them to stick oh absolutely and if I just look at those and I just try to think, oh, I'm going to remember that next time I draw, it never happens. Yeah, totally. So I think I really just need to sit <laughs> down and draw them. And then it, it becomes part of my my uh, sort of vernacular that I can put down on the page. Yeah. These guys are super fun. I love when you do your little crazy <laughs> mech dudes. Yeah, again, heavily inspired off of what Darren was doing. He was doing these characters and I was just like, I, I got to do this, man. This is... I can't just watch someone have all the fun. I know. He's, he has a lot of fun in his sketchbooks. He's super inspirational. Got me drawing again a yeah. little bit. Unfortunately, not enough time to draw right now. And, you know, um, you know, going back to the point of drawing traditionally versus digitally, I feel like a lot of decision-making can kind of help help with, you know, what you do digitally because, you know, you're, you're kind of being a little bit more um, preemptive. You're, you're kind of forecasting what you're going to do and what you're going to invest your time on. And I, I feel like it makes it easier in the long run for doing digital work. Um, but I think it's, it's this constant back and forth thing that you have to just yeah. kind of stick with, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's where all the ideas happen or don't happen. Yeah. But um, it definitely gets you ready to design. And what about, you know, do you think it, because, you know, it's sort of, even though it's ballpoint pen and you can sketch lightly, mm -hmm. it still can be a little unforgiving, right? I mean, still, even as light as you want to try and draw, you're still going to get a mark on the page. Oh, yeah. Do you think that it, drawing forces you to think ahead? Oh, absolutely. And by thinking ahead, then you start to develop and those sort of connections in your brain yep. that allow you to foresee what something's going to look like before it's on the page, yep. which then also when you start to paint, the marks you mark you put down are much more efficient. Yep, they're more efficient, and you stick with it, and you go to the next thing. Um, I, again, I, I found that when I was drawing in Photoshop... Um, you know, you can, the, the control Z aspect really can prolong your, you know, your ability to finish something. And I find that, you know, drawing traditionally, you can just, it's, the mark is there, you're done, you got to move on to the next thing. Yeah, it forces you to think ahead, which is, it is one of the great things about drawing. So what's going on in this book? This is another new book, more recent book. Um, yeah, this was, well, this was a little bit before. Um, this was a, 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 one of the earlier sketchbooks that my brother developed for Cottonwood, and I wanted to try I try a different sketching style. This is a little bit more Mobius-esque, uh -huh. um, and 
I, ultimately, I wanted to see what kind of designs I would generate. Would it be the same or would it be completely different mm. because of the kind of the fidelity and the sketching style? Interesting. So that was kind of my approach for these guys. And that, and that involved doing a lot more contour lines, a lot more, more cross hatching yeah. with the contour right. to try and describe the form. Mm -hmm. And then, and so what did you learn? Did you start to describe different forms or was it all the same? I'm sorry. Um, I found that it, I, I did kind of explore some different shapes. Um, again, you know, design, design is such a subjective kind of field, uh, especially on the aesthetic side. But I found that, um, you know, for me sketching in this way, I, I kind of had certain shapes that I were generating. I had certain, um, you know, weights and um, certain things that certain little cadences for texture and for details that I primarily generated through your sketching style. Did you find that you spent, it became much more about the illustration and less about the design? Absolutely, it became very illustration heavy. Uh -huh. um, so it was that balance of, you know, working with this illustration style versus design. So we'll go, actually we'll go this right page. here. Um, so this was kind of, I abandoned that style. I was like, all right, I'm gonna just try the pure, going back to ballpoint pen, these are just some quick military guy studies, um, and just kind of to see if you know what my how my brain would react by drawing differently, um, and it's a very interesting thing, you know, as as an artist and as a designer, you, you find you find different ways to explore, um, and my my goal for this was kind of exploring through, you know, through the media, through kind of how it can how it can influence the aesthetics or the sensibility per se. Mm -hmm. I think what's interesting is, you know, we as designers, the drawing is just um, one step along the way to right. creating usually something three-dimensional. Right. Right. Whether you're industrial designer, entertainment designer, it's going to get built digitally, but it's not about illustration for us. And so it's interesting to go and do exercises that are much more about illustration. Right. Um, and the technique. And this is more the finished product. Right. Absolutely. But for us, when we're doing these kinds of drawings, they're really trying to problem solve. And it's really never our finished product. Absolutely. So... Um, I think you know we we tend to try and do nice drawings because everybody likes to look at nice drawings exactly. and it helps sell our idea. Exactly. But it's really not our end goal. Right. It's kind of just it's kind of like a nice happy byproduct. Exactly. All right, so we've got a new book here. We have, I see this is a spiral one. Yeah. Do you do you generally like the spiral bound? Um. You know, uh, personally, I I don't really like it just because I you know I kind of beat up my sketchbooks. A lot of times these spiral spirals kind of fray on me and they, they kind of break apart. Mm. Um, but again, it's just something that I had, um, yeah, when I was just kind of on, on the road. So these, Oh, my favorite, stuff with wheels. Yeah, <laughs> some cars right here. Just get ready for some, uh, some crits right here, guys. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, again, trying, trying a little bit slightly of a different style. Um, I was using a red, a red ballpoint um, high-tech pen, and it's very, it kind of melts when you put, apply a little bit of water. Mm. And I really liked that aspect because I felt like I was drawing and kind of rendering at the same time. So I didn't need to carry a marker with different values. It was just strictly a a, a high-tech red pen with a water brush pen. A water brush pen. So oh, okay. So highly effective. And that's like one of these guys, right? This, that version? One of these the guys pilot. here. So yep. Just so I don't get a ton, a ton of questions that I have to always answer the same. <laughs> pilot, pilot pen. High tech, right? Yeah. That was, the, but in red instead in of red. In this case is blue. Yep. And then a little uh, applying, even with a regular brush, brush a little bit of water. Yeah, just a little to bit to pull of water. the ink around. Yeah, that's nice. really fun. That is fun. And then the automotive stuff, Some or vehicles. Stuff. Yep. Not necessarily automobiles. So this is nice. I see this in your sketching style a lot, especially with your, your older Max. Maybe we'll find some. Mm -hmm. Is that where you really just try to, to draw the shadow graphics, right? Or yeah. the shadow shape. Mm -hmm. And then that's really the most minimal um, way that you draw, is just to draw the shape of the shadows. Very little in regards to, you know, re-emphasizing the silhouette or the outline with a heavy line. It's really all about, in this case, the shadow. Yeah. And so the reason for that was, I, I sometimes like to, I mean, you, you can call me lazy, but I, I, I think there's something about, there's something um, that really brings an element of surprise um, when you can just kind of loosely indicate what's going on on this area, the shadow side. 
And sometimes when you're drawing, I feel like I just don't want to think about all the details, so I'll just block it in shadow and mm. see if it looks good. And then I'll come back to it, and if I have a really good idea in terms of all the details and kind of the transitions that are happening there, um, I'll commit to it when I'm rendering or doing a yeah, final drawing. It's an effective style, but I don't think you <clears throat> are, can do this from your imagination that well unless <laughs> you can render to yeah. a high level, right? That's, because absolutely. you need to know how to render that shadow side and the light side and know where the cast shadows fall right in your imagination yep. first to then simplify it into a sketching style. Absolutely. So, I mean, you can do it looking at a picture, yep. no problem, but... Um, when you have to do it from, you know, your imagination, it gets to be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Scott, you, you taught me one of the most valuable lessons, which is foundation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I, when I started out, I, I've, I was so not, I was never really excited about foundation. You know, it's such a <laughs> it's boring tough. I know, thing. it's super dry. Yeah. But I think, you know, the later, the more you draw, you're like, you can't, you can't run away from foundation. And it's one of the things that I was grateful to have you as an instructor and mentor was you really grinded that into, you know, the students and everyone around you. And it, it just kind of becomes it's a, this tool, this thing, the secondhand nature thing, um, as you're drawing and exploring that, you know, you have to stick with certain, you know, fun, fundamental rules in order to really clarify what you're drawing. Yeah. I think it helps a lot because then you know how to one, you know, critique your own work and you know how to fix it. Right. You know, and then you know how to bend the rules too. Exactly. Because then you're like, you know how to cheat. You know how to cheat perspective and you know, and then that becomes really fun for drawing, especially because say you're working in 3D models all the time. Mm -hmm. Later, the computer's not going to cheat. Yep. Right. But a lot of times for an illustration, that's not what you want. Exactly. So you, you want to know how to bend the rules and know how to um, cheat it basically. Yeah. Um, but you don't know that until, you know, you don't get good at that, let's say, unless you do it slow down do it technically correct. Yeah. And then the quick sketches get better. The abstraction gets better. Yeah. So great. So, so do you think, you know, continuing on with that thought about foundation skills and the fundamentals, do you think that that anchors you and allows you to do a, a wider variety of forms? Oh, absolutely. Because it's, it's like, if I know, if I understand perspective, if I understand the basic primitive shape lighting, I can basically mold mold it like I'm molding clay, you know, mm. or playing with Legos. And essentially what I did here, you know, I, if you really look at it, they're just boxes, right? Boxes yeah, I know. and cylinders yeah. and circles. Yeah, um, you know, it's a tough thing when doing these types of drawings. A lot of times I find that when I'm doing a drawing, I add a lot of stuff to my drawing because it doesn't look good. Like, say if I just did the basic big forms. Right. Okay. It's all there, right? But without noodling it and adding details and cross-hatching, the drawing doesn't come to life. Right. Even though if I painted it, all that cross-hatching would go away. Yeah. But somehow in a drawing, you need a little more texture. Yep. And you need a, a few more, you need a little more variation. You need some details called out that in reality, in a photograph or a painting, those would all go away. Yeah. So it's something to always remember, too, when you start to render it. You're like, well, okay, I, I know now this was just in there to make the drawing look great. Exactly. And now either like overlapping a line with a heavy outline how am I going to do that with lighting, right? So then you right. have to find other ways to do that without the line. Exactly. Because that's something about the linear drawing is that you can just punch things out with thicker line weight. Yep. But when you're doing a painting or a value painting, you got to really consider the light side and shadow side and just really kind of stage it accordingly. So that's what I love about your drawings. Is it looks like you're just as confident with organic shapes as you are with mechanical. Oh, man. It goes all back to the basics. And, and, it, and what I learned was... You know, if you understand the basics of, you know, design, rendering, and perspective, you can essentially do anything, right? Mm -hmm. Because those are just your basic tools of even, even writing, right? If you understand grammar, you understand how to read and spell and write. Um, it's all about now just your ideas. Right. So these were just kind of a series of um, just kind of watercolor mixing with some ink drawings. And it's purely experimental. Um, and they're kind of weird, uh, oblong, alien... Um, kind of weapon shapes that I designed and the things the things that I only focused on because you know I had a good understanding of foundation is just purely the idea yeah no it, it is it, it is a good analogy language right and then it's what you do with those language skills to tell your story exactly. same with drawing right it's the, the the draftsmanship the ability to understand how to render volume with with value yep. right um, and then how to put something in perspective how to drop it into a scene right for instance yeah 
how to show scale, how to outline things to make a drawing look more interesting. Yep. Is this more of that high tech with a water? Yeah, this is more of that high tech pen um, with the water brush, and I I fell in love with it, and I was doing it for a couple days to weeks on end, um, and it was just again I I did have to carry markers. I only carried a high tech pen with a water brush pen, and that was it. And it was just so easy. And this is very much like your Cottonwood Arts paper. Yeah, right? this is heavy. the same same exact yeah. paper. Um, so it's, it's heavy enough, it doesn't wrinkle a lot, yep. um, and it's rippled a little bit, but not much. Definitely acceptable, yeah. not so much that it's like a potato chip and you can't, <laughs> you can't stack it in as a exactly. flat, flat stack anymore. So this is something I wanted to share with you and everyone else that's watching was kind of my, my general thought process, right? And, you know, there's a saying where you start from broad to specific, mm -hmm. right? Um, large to small and, and in this sense it's more starting a little bit more abstractly you know I'm starting with a blotch kind of a marker lay-in I don't know where my details are I have <clears throat> a really loose concept of what I essentially want to execute and then as you overlay whether it's in Photoshop or whether you do it traditionally like I did you put a vellum on top and you essentially start executing and kind of really figuring out all the details it's a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to move it over to the side here. Um, but you can see that I was able to really clearly investigate all these areas because I had something to work with as a base. Yeah, it's you know it's it's a romantic idea to try and do this amount of design work and beautiful draftsmanship and drawing all in one drawing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And I fall into that. <laughs> I fall into that that trap all the time. Oh, like yeah. oh, I want to have a beautiful illustration, a beautiful drawing. And a cool design. Yeah. And I wanted to just do it once. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But in the end, if you were to time the amount of time it takes to do, you know, this better, the finished product and the finished line drawing done to a higher level. Yep. And this done faster. Yeah. Right? In the end, it's the more productive way to work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it's so hard to train your brain to think that way, to like absolutely. just go loose and fast and then know you're going to do an overlay. Yeah. Right? To create the specific details and the final illustration. Mm -hmm. We always want to do it there. Yeah. You know, and, and I think a lot of times our designs suffer because you don't want to change. <laughs> I know they do for me because they're like, oh, it's such a beautiful drawing so far. I don't want to, uh, I know I should change the design there, but I'm not <laughs> going to because it, it's going to require that I can't erase it there. And, right. you know, and so right. I just leave it and, right. and because I'm trying to make a nicer drawing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a trap for sure. But that's great. Um, and it's a very clear um, example and then when it comes in to do to do the details how do you get good at that um just some of the the mechanical um stuff you know and a lot of people told me like oh do you look at engine parts and you know you know airplane hydraulics and stuff like that like yeah you can you can definitely look at that stuff but i think um when i looked at car engines when i initially started it's so daunting there's so much stuff on there mm -hmm. i started looking at simple things like the hinge on your lamp or you know the door um the door mechanics on on your you know your cupboard or your door when you when you uh when you open the door to your to your kitchen or something and just understanding the basics and then just kind of evolving it from there so if you look at all the mechanics here they're quite simple right um i've just kind of overlapped them with other you know very preliminary uh functionalities yep and it makes it into a more complicated thing yes and then did you, when you were studying those very simple things, when you studied those, whether, you know, a uh, hinge on a kitchen cabinet or something, did you actually draw those? I, I, I drew all of them. Mm. Yeah, I did a ton of studies. Um, and they weren't necessarily illustration studies. They're more, uh, you know, we call them like industrial design studies, right? Just understanding how this thing functions. Exactly. You know, just like schematics. Work. Yeah, just yeah. schematic drawings. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Pivot points and centers and that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny is that it's just like doing figure drawing. Absolutely. And it's just like learning the figure. Exactly. And where all the, the hinge points are and where the, you know, exactly. the wrist bends, et cetera, and where exactly. it twists and rotates. It's just all anatomy. That's all it is. Yep. It's just mechanical anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> And then you switched it up here. You're doing some more yeah, organic things. Yeah, just some more of the, uh, the, the, brush, the water brush pan and the... Uh, oh, that, you know, that even worked well on this. It's getting rippling a little, but it's even a thinner paper. Yeah, this, but, is, this is actually just a regular copy paper. But when I initially started applying the water, it did ripple a little bit. Yeah, of course. So um, I had to be a little bit more careful mm -hmm. not to, you know, oversaturate the paper with water. Yeah, it's a nice style. 
And it is, and it, you know what's nice is that it, it matches, right? The, yeah. The ink is the same color as the dark ink. Exactly. Whereas, you know, the marker you might have is maybe a little warm, and then your pen is like a little cool black. Exactly. And those, those fight with each other a little bit. Yeah. So it's, it's a nice end result. So this look like some quick studies. Yeah, this, again, um, I always carry around three, three basic tools. You know, a ballpoint pen, water brush pen, and a, uh, this is a, the Pentel um, G, GFKP, I believe. Is that the same? Is it's the same a black brush pen, the Japanese brand? Yeah, the pocket brush. Pocket brush pen? I the believe Pentel so. pocket brush yeah, pen. The it's the same old one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, just trying to get my that, fingers That's an going. awesome pen. Yeah. yeah, and you get a lot of nice weights, and this is what I love yep. about the, the brush pen. And I was just doing some caricatures of my coworkers and, and stuff like that. But it, it allows me to draw not only linearly, but very graphically as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's a fun thing. Um, but it's really unforgiving, right? I mean, you really it, have to think ahead. <laughs> it is. Right? You've got to like, as soon it as is. you mess up his eye, it's done. It's done. I mean, yeah. after that, you're, you're, you, you've kind of, you have to live with it, you know? You're yeah, like, you, right, you live with page. the nose that you draw there with exactly. that one little mark. So, <laughs> And especially with gesture and, and um, facial, you know, sort of expression it's yeah. very very subtle yeah so um do you do you slow down and then just think and try to pre-visualize yeah when it comes to the face or any specific details that are recognizable you have to just slow down and just Take it, a deep it breath. forces you yeah to really be more observant mm. and that's yep. where i i found i kind of learned the whole concept of mark making you know and yes it's a very familiar term with illustrators and painters yep um but for me who came from just you know industrial design background um, I was like, man, this is like painting. This is exactly like painting. Like, yeah, it's about the expressiveness and the shape and the character of the mark itself. Yeah. And um, you're doing a beautiful job of it here. Thank you. So really great. Great studies, great sketches. There's just some more poses, some random people. It's always funny because as I'm drawing them, at a certain point, they're going to look up and they're going to notice that you're drawing them. Yes. And it's this awkward moment. Yeah. You're do you just of, fold up your book and yeah, walk away, you're, you're, or do you're you? Total or, or do you, you know, you know, continue? You know, before I used to, I used to just kind of pack my things, and I'm like, oh my god, forget it. I'm just gonna walk away. But at a certain point, I was like, my drawing's gonna suffer. So I don't care. For that day, I'm gonna be a creep. I'm yeah. gonna look at them and be like, <laughs> I am drawing you. Yes. <laughs> I am looking at you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, and if, if you've done a nice drawing when they walk over at least, yeah. then they're, they're okay and they smile. Yeah, exactly. So, they're like, oh, hey, you're, you're yeah. an artist. Yeah, you're all right. You yeah. can draw me and then they'll pose for you. Exactly. But sometimes, you know, they see what you're doing with them and they're like, yeah. hey. Right? <laughs> yeah. They chase you off. Yeah. So we went to the zoo um, and we were just drawing some koala bears and uh, some kangaroos. This is, I believe this is my trip over to Australia. Uh, took a day out and uh, went to some of the, the parks out there. Mm. It's really cool. This is my friend, Keikai Kotaki. Keikai, yeah. Um, cool. Awesome, I can tell. awesome illustrator. But he yeah. has such an iconic look. Yes. And I was hanging out with him for that entire week, and I was like, I have to draw this guy. Yeah. He's like such a character. He has great work, too. And yeah. also with the brush pen. Oh, his, yeah. His like, samurai things are amazing. Fantastic. Yep. Well, great. And then you can just see every time you make a mark, every time you're faced with a new texture, the texture of this foot, the texture of right, those little scales yeah. or the feathers, you're forced to think before you draw. And then once you've done that and you've accomplished, you know, you experiment a little bit. Yeah. Right. And then once you master that, then that's something you retain. Yep. And it's always a part of you. And whenever you need to pull that out, right, you can do it. Absolutely. Like trying to figure out, oh, how do I, wait a minute. Now, I haven't had to do that yet. Those like big scales or big you know, blocks, how do, how am I going to do that? And so, um, here you're using like a little bit of light side, shadow side, but then yeah. this is all on the light side yet you're using these very, very dark marks. Yeah. Just to kind of accentuate. Yeah. And your details. eye will always connect those bold points to continue and finish the silhouette. Yeah. You didn't even, you didn't even use a line yeah. for the silhouette. You just use those little guys being obscured actually by the silhouette. Yeah. So that's pretty, that's pretty sophisticated, but <laughs> very, you. very cool.